how much do you focus on audience feedback in shaping the direction of a show? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, my answer is going to be almost zero. <laughs> Uh, part, and I don't want to say that I don't care what the audience thinks, but to a degree, I don't care what the audience thinks And that. I don't mean that in a, like a rude, you know, dismissive, just screw the audience type of thing. I mean it more in a, uh, I think you, you can get lost when you're obsessing over how the audience is going to react to something. And in we're fully 15, 10, 15 years into social media ruling our existences that if someone doesn't like something, you're going to see, depending on the size of your audience, you're going to see dozens, hundreds, thousands, millions of people complaining about what they feel like their characters would and would not do in your story. And I'm not saying ignore that. I am saying uh, I I am not going to I'm not going to let that shape where I think the story should go because just every little thing that comes up and you try to address it in the next episode, the next series, the next season, the next whatever, you're you're going to spend all of your time trying to please everybody and then you're going to please nobody, especially not yourself. So if I like it, if I like the direction it's going, if the people I'm working with, whether that's co-writers, producers, actors, if it's something that we're doing live, it, uh, yeah, I, I, I would like to think that the audience likes it and if the audience likes it and the project does well, fantastic. If the audience absolutely hates it and I totally miss the mark, then it's going to have very, very few views. And that's just the way it's going to be. But I, I, I can't let the audience tell me what I should and should not be doing because then I'm doing it. It's a disservice to myself and I'm not putting anything good in the story because I'm just obsessed about, oh no, what are they going to say on Twitter? What are they going to say on Instagram? What are they going to say here? And like, I, you've just lost yourself at that point. So focus almost, almost zero, almost zero. And I kind of, at least for me, that's kind of the way that it it's going to have to go. How do you adapt your writing style to fit the tone and style of each platform? Yeah, see, I still kind of feel like that's a platform. Mm. I would kind of need to know what the length of it is which is a little bit platformy, but you know, TikTok, it's gone up to three minutes now, or is it longer? Like, yeah, I mean, it's, that's, that's kind of the, that's kind of the basis of a lot of what I do is, is, is how to tell the story best inside each platform. But that, yeah, that see, that depends on so many things of just why it's sort of hard to answer. Is it long form? Is it short form? Are you doing an unboxing video? Are you doing uh, a video series? Are you doing behind the scenes videos? So yeah, they, they all kind of need to be adjusted to what the platform is, but I would, I would have to go through each variation in each platform to kind of really give a more in-depth answer. But yeah, you do very much have to adapt your writing style. Okay, I'll answer it as in as in the one of the hardest transitions I had to do was the first time that I started writing specifically for the audio format. Um, I was brought in to a podcast. They had done a whole first season, had a really good um, really good reception by the audience. They were moving into the second season. And they, uh, their main character was female and there was a lot of female characters in it and it was an all male writing staff. So they were trying to bring in other people to kind of help flush out the writing staff. Uh, and I was one of the people that came in to help with the second season and adjusting my writing, which at that exact moment in time had been primarily st uh, stage writing and screenwriting, adapting it to an audio only. It was a, 
science fiction choose your own adventure. So we would do a couple episodes and then leave a cliffhanger and let the audience vote which direction we went with it. But um, adjusting my writing style, which th for anybody that doesn't know, generally speaking, when you're talking about theater, you're talking mostly about the dialogue and what people are saying. Now, theater is still very visual, but most like if you think of theater sets, most of them are, you know, impressionistic. It's just an impression of what the background is. That could be a cityscape. That could be a living room. That could be the inside of a car. That could be a volcano. That could be a spaceship, right? It It's generally sort of impressionistic. You just have to, <coughs> excuse me, you have to give a lot of grace to what the visual look is. And in theater, you're focusing on the dialogue. You're focusing on what they're saying and just a little bit on the movement and all of that. In in television, somewhat film, predominantly, it's the visual. It's all about the camera angles, where the camera is going, what the movements are, what the lighting is. Certainly still a focus on the audio. If the audio is bad, people aren't going to watch it. But Theater is a little more audio based. Film, generally speaking, is much more. It's where you get the word cinematic from. Like that's that's literally where that word from, you know, cinema, in this case, the camera placement. So it's very, very visual. Moving to an audio only format, I was really struggling. And I would come up with, with you know, eight pages of a script and I'd be really proud of them and I'd show them off and they'd be like, yeah, I mean, generally the story is good, but we'll kind of have to shape things better. And working with one of the writers, it it was, it was the amount of times that you would have to stop and you would have to put exposition into the dialogue because otherwise there was no way to understand what's going on. Like I, like the, the scenes, especially because it was science fiction and they, the characters were on a different planet and they didn't know what was going on. Every time, they go to a new scene or they're in a new location you have to describe what everything looks like you have to describe the animals you have to describe the scenery um the air the colors like you have to describe all that but you have to put it casually into the dialogue which which is exposition and that was a really difficult thing for me to do because with all of my you know, screenwriting, I'd gotten used to not doing any exposition at all in the dialogue but now you would have to say you know don't step on that. Like you, you would have to put that sort of thing into the dialogue to make people understand who are just listening what is happening. And it, it gave me this real insight into what it was like uh, writing for radio because for decades, radio was the primary medium. Even when television started to get big, radio was still much more important up until about the point where television what was it the mid late 60s i believe when television switched to color and it was at that point that television really started um surpassing radio but yeah that was that was a that was a difficult transition writing solely for audio when i had focused so much of my writing time on visualizing things and making sure what people are seeing carries so much of the story and not necessarily the dialogue that was a big that was a big change for me